Hello everyone and welcome back to Arxangel RC. I have to apologize for the delay in making this video and the Believer review, but things happened that were out of my control and totally messed up my schedule. Now that I'm back on track, here is the Believer mapping plane in all of its glory. For those impatient to wait until the end of the video, you can find all relevant links in the description below. Since I have written an extensive review in my blog, I will not talk much about the build of the plane. You can follow the link below and read all about it with high-res photos to complement. As for the plane itself, I can say this impressive. It is obvious that a lot of thought and experience has gone into designing this one for mapping. The quality of the parts and the way they fit is simply unmatched in my experience so far and even though I don't pretend to have had every plane out there, I have had a good number of them. None of the ones I have that have come as an unassembled kit have been so easy and trouble free to build and put together. The wings and tail fins have not one but two carbon spars in each one and the quick attach and detach locking mechanisms are so easy to use and are surprisingly solid and secure. The plane can come apart or be assembled in less than 30 seconds. The MFD Nimbus can also compare here but it doesn't even come close when it comes to internal space and mapping optimizations. That being said, the Believer is not very oriented towards FPV at first but with some DIY you could find a place for a camera or two and possibly a gimbal as I I'm planning to do. After all, I did have to do some mods on the clouds as well to get cameras in the nose, so nothing new here. The difference is, here you get a lot more internal space, which could potentially mean longer flights, which is good for both FPV and mapping. And speaking of longer flights, one thing that really helps with that is having as little drag as possible, and that is achieved by keeping the outside of the fuselage clean and free of gear. To that end, I installed everything on the inside with only the receiver antenna slightly sticking out to the sides of the fuselage and the video antenna head sticking out the bottom hatch but that's it and I have to say it does make a difference in the air. After all you would want your plane to be as slick as possible thus being able to fly faster so you can more easily endanger so many innocent lives while having the time of your life. You know what? I can even see people falling out of the sky simply by having this plane assembled and ready ready for takeoff. It is a real problem indeed. Makes it difficult to leave the flying field after that because I have to go over all these bodies with my car. Anyway, getting back on track now. For some reason I thought it would be a good idea to go with an Omnibus F3 Pro with iNav on it for this build and that is an autopilot setup I have no prior experience with on a brand new plane that I have never flown. A word of caution guys, not a good combination. Luckily there were no crashes but for a time I was not sure if the plane just flies badly or the iNav is trying to crash it. Thankfully it turned out to be the latter and even though that is now sorted it out, I did waste three flights wondering what the hell was going on. For instance, check out this takeoff attempt in the stabilized mode while the INAF killer mix was still active. The elevator to throttle mix is designed to pitch down a flying wing when you throttle up so it doesn't go up at higher speeds, but it really messes up the flight characteristics of a plane that is not a flying wing. As I throttled up, the autopilot pushed the elevator down and it is only by a miracle that the believer didn't end up in those bushes, although it did clip one of the branches, so it does have a scratch on one of the wings. Now though, iNav is almost reined in and the plane actually flies pretty good. All up weight at this time is around 3.5 kilograms with a 6S 12 amp pack. At some point I flew it for around an hour with the charger putting back just over 6 amps in the battery which means that at this weight and with this prop and motor combo the Believer could very well prove to be the most efficient plane I have. Sadly I was not able to do a proper endurance flight at this time because right Right before takeoff one of the motors literally fell apart. I am only glad it happened on the ground, not that it would have been much of a problem to fly on one motor, but I'm still getting used to this plane and would like to avoid this sort of thing. I have ordered some new T motors hoping something like this will not happen again, so as soon as they are in I will do the endurance and update the review, so keep an eye out on my blog in the forum threads. Going back to the flight performance again, in full manual mode and full servo travel 
although the plane is very agile so it could use a good amount of expo or even some servo travel reduction to make it more docile and controllable the cg seems to be right where it is noted in the specs on the banggood listing but i had mixed results when doing my stall testing so i moved the battery just a smudge further forward and speaking of these stall tests with full servo travel no throttle and a full up elevator which on this plane means some serious control surface deflection almost looks like an air brake the plane actually stopped in the air and did go into a gentle spiral which was child's play to get out of next flight i moved the battery a tad forward and limited servo travel a bit and wouldn't you know it it didn't stall just sort of rocked around and started making a descending turn trying that same thing in inav's angle mode which is something of an equivalent to audio pilot's fly by wire a mode the plane absolutely did not want to stall just parachuted down and rocked the wings a bit but that mode does limit servo travel more which is actually a good thing you will have to pardon the fact that the camera is tilted to one side in some of the dvr footage didn't manage to mount it straight on the first try so during the stall testing i was actually quite pleasantly surprised to see that at 3.5 kilograms this plane doesn't begin to stall until it goes below 30 kilometers an hour which would be difficult to achieve if it's a tad nose heavy after i get used to it i will balance it close to neutral for best efficiency and glide so it can go longer and further being able to fly slow was also very helpful when i chased it with my phantom as i was able to easily catch up with it and stay on it the barometer on the omnibus board seems to be quite accurate and precise because my friend had no trouble keeping the plane level while i was chasing it it just looks so good in the air and the fact that there aren't a ton of antennas visibly sticking out of it only makes things better also might have to move the video antenna a bit further up the bottom hatch so it wouldn't get knocked around on landings and speaking of landings this plane really does not like to come down once everything is trimmed out and set up properly and when it eventually does come down it lands so gently that i couldn't even believe it everything else i have would just sort of drop to the ground the moment i try to slow it down for that landing but this one just slides gently on the ground and the landing cushions do a marvelous job of protecting the foam by keeping the plane elevated about two or three centimeters above the ground they would also help when you have a mapping camera in there and the lens will not be as close to the ground so what can i tell you guys i see great potential in the believer you can even say that i believe in it it is certainly well designed and would make a very good mapping platform now loading it up to five kilograms for instance would mean it needs to maintain a higher speed so as not to stall but that is true for every other plane and should be well understood when it comes to fpv that bulky foam in the nose does have some good potential to hold a camera and possibly a gimbal on top of it so not that difficult to mod it being able to remove wings and tail in under 30 seconds helps a lot with deployment time and also makes the plane very compact so you may even be able to find a case for it overall i am very impressed by the quality of this kit and how much stuff has been manufactured specifically for it flight character Characteristics for the time being do suggest that it is a good stable and efficient flyer despite its larger body compared to the clouds for instance and it is quite easy to handle once you convince the flight controller to stop trying to kill it i will certainly be keeping this one around for a while and will do some more tests including to see if this l9r antenna placement will yield the same results as on the clouds in terms of range now if you want more details about the plane i would again urge you to follow the link in the description below to my blog and if you're interested in buying this plane or anything else for that matter doing so via any of the links below would help support this channel and would be greatly appreciated if you have liked this video don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and consider doing the same on facebook for daily updates happy and safe mapping or fpving and until next time